Fred in the shed. Um, another little CB video here on the 6900N. Just answering some of the comments that I've had throughout the year. So I thought it'd be easy just to make a video. And uh, on this video, people have commented on the five high, which is how they call it. They call it a five high warning, and it throws people out, especially when they're setting up the radio for the first time, and if they're a little bit inexperienced with sort of CB type radio. So, in a nutshell, this is what happens: you connect your antenna to your 6900N, and in the moment you key up, this happens. You get that really awful kind of bleep and you get the high five if you like comes on if you're on sideband for example and you key up nothing will happen until you start talking into the microphone because you're obviously on sideband there's no carrier wave and your your signal is only generated by the power of your voice in the microphone so for an example you'll key up on sideband enough as soon as you start talking one two one two so you get this warning comes up and uh, people call it five high. Well, it's, it's actually not five high. The, the five part of it is really the radio saying S. So it really is S high. And the S stands for SWR, the start standing wave ratio. And what the radio is doing, in effect, it's, is it's the emergency circuit cutting in and it's blocking you from transmitting on the radio because it has detected that you have an exceptionally high SWR and it's a built-in protection it's a good thing it stops you from uh, sort of keying up and potentially damaging the radio so now we've established that you've got a high SWR now I'm just gonna for people that are used to sort of CB that's all you need to know you, you know that you go away and sort of you know check for problems but for people that are completely new which a lot of my people that comment on my videos are um, you've got a problem okay so you've got you've obviously got a high SWR now the first thing that I would check and this is especially true if you've set up a base station antenna for the first time and you've used a long kind of coaxial lead, a long patch lead, first thing will be just to check your connections here on the little uh, sort of 259 plugs, especially if you've soldered them yourself. It's just to recheck your work to make sure that you haven't got a direct short on any of the plugs because that would definitely cause a high SWR warning. Also, you know, don't be kind of too confident if you've perhaps bought a very long sort of patch lead to connect your antenna. Um, don't be overconfident that, that that lead may have a, a fault already in it as it's been sort of supplied. Um, basically, I don't think a lot of them are tested and over the few, just, just a few years that I've been on CB, I've had three I've had three patch leads that come from a reputable supplier, but three of them that had had a direct short. Some of the braiding had shorted out inside the plug and I had to resolder the plug. So the first thing you want to do is to check the basics. Just check your line to the antenna. Um, a simple way to do this would just be to get, if you've got a multimeter, and do a continuity test from the center pin to the outside edge. With the cable disconnected away from the antenna, you should not get a contact. If you try that with that connected to the antenna, you're most likely to get a contact, and that's confusing. So you need to disconnect the cable first. But if you get a continuity test contact, if you get a bleep when you test the two sort of sides there, that means you've got a problem. If you haven't got a continuity tester, if you Google, um, simple testing meter that will show you how to build a simple testing meter with a battery and a bulb and that will work absolutely fine but basically you don't want any continuity on that lead at all. Now if you've tested your lead and your lead is okay then it could quite simply be that your antenna needs to be tuned. Um, what, what, what is SWR? What well, CB people call and this really annoys the radio hams but for CB people call it SWAR or SWIR. It's really SWR, it stands for standing wave ratio. In a nutshell what happens you've got your CB sort of transmitter here and then you've got the sort of the antenna and in an ideal world these need to be matched the impedance between the two objects your, 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 your coaxial lead and your antenna and your transmitter they're 50 ohm and they need to be matched now if you've got a mismatch if your antenna isn't tuned 
to the correct sort of frequency band, what happens is you then start getting waves coming coming back from the sort of antenna, which reflected back to the sort of radio. You get electrical waves; they're called standing waves, hence standing wave ratio. Now, the first thing they're undesirable because they will reduce the amount of transmit power that's coming out of your radio getting towards the antenna and if they get too high then you'll get too much reflected power going back to the radio and that can cause damage the radio will heat up the uh, transistor finals can overheat and uh, yeah that will cause damage to your radio and that's why you've got the SWR warning built into most modern radios. So it just might be a simple case, I mean, you know, some of the comments that I've had, people are setting up home base antennas, for example, they've got, we'll say, a silver rod or something like that, um, and they, they get a high SWR warning, and it might just be that they've just rested the antenna against the wall. Why are they going to test it? It, it won't work. Um, home base antennas, they, they need a lot of space. They like to have uh, a lot of breathing space. They don't like to be sort of hemmed in, placed near any sort of heavy objects that will cause you a high SWR. So if you're going to do the SWR on your home base antenna, um, you need to mount it on a pole, preferably in the middle of your garden, away from anything, and then tune your antenna. Now, to tune a home base antenna, I'm not going to get too involved in that because they're all slightly different. Um, a silver rod, for example, is dead easy. You just extend or lower the sort of top section. You mark it first, and you sort of go up and down, and that will give you either a higher or lower SWR reading, and you can go from there. Um, mobile antennas is, is a little different. Um, obviously, the, the, the coaxial lead is normally sort of connected straight to the antenna again some some mobile antennas can be supplied with a direct short of fault that isn't um it's not that uncommon but it, it's sort of it's fairly sort of rare to be fair the, if you've got a high swr warning on your mobile antenna it's most likely to be the a ground plane issue and that is basically if you're using a mag mount for example it needs to be sort of on a quite a large area of steel to get a magnetic connection to give you the ground plane to lower the swr uh, a lot of modern cars I've got sort of glass panoramic sort of roofs so that restricts the amount of metal that you can put it on a lot of also cars are using aluminium as well which doesn't help so it might just be a question that you need to sort of move your antenna around on the roof of your car and see if that affects your SWR or just check that you haven't sort of accidentally sort of maybe sort of shut the sort of the, the coaxial lead in a door or something and it's being crushed as well which again could affect the SWR now when it comes down to SWR um, this radio has got a built-in SWR meter. I'll show that in just a second. Um, most radios have. I still am a bit old school. I still prefer the separate little sort of SWR meters that you can buy and sort of daisy chain in line to your antenna with a patch lead. They're not expensive, typically less than £15 delivered off eBay or from Knights or Radiocom or something like that. And uh, they always just give you that sort of second kind of opinion because although... SWR meters on the on built-in radios, you know, seem to be quite accurate. Um, it's always sort of nice to see a, a meter, an analog meter, just double sort of check that this this is reading okay. And also, if this is tripping out instantly, you're getting a high SWR, you won't see a reading. Whereas with an analog display, at least you'll get an indication of your reading, which will give you more of an idea. Right, I won't be able to use this frequency. We have some uh, we have some activity on the uh, the 305, so I'm just going to have to find a clear sort of channel here. Bear with me. Got quite a bit of activity today. Go down a little bit. Right, that looks sort of uh, fairly clear. Now, as a default, the 6900N show when when you transmit, it shows you the transmit power there up to uh, one to thirty. And, uh, but you can change that, you can change that. If you look on the front panel of your 6900, and I think this might be the same with the Anytone 555 and a lot of these other clone radios, but uh, if you look just, where, just below where it says lock, you'll see it says SWR, and if you switch that on, and you look over there, you'll see SWR comes up on the display. I'll just do that again, just keep an eye on that display there. There you go. So once we're now in uh, SWR mode, that will now, when you key up the microphone on the little bar graph below there from uh, 1 to 30, that will give you your SWR reading. So looking here on the display on the 6900, when you watch the little TXRX like when I key the radio up, 
that gives me my SWR. Now, my antenna is uh, tuned to have its lowest SWR on 27305 because that's the frequency I use sort of the most. But if I was, for example, if I go up to the FM channels on the UK FM, what we're sort of most likely to use, and um, we'll get a clear one, just double check, say it's channel 10, my, my SWR will be higher. So I'm expecting this probably be about 1.5, something like that. Let me just key up there. Yep, there you go. So there you go, my, on channel 10 on FM, my SWR, as you can see, is 1.5. And on my radio, as I go higher up, up the, uh, the channels, it will actually go higher because, my, there you go, 1.6, because my antenna is uh, tuned to 305. So yeah, you can use the built-in SWR meter if you're just starting out and understanding, you know, expenditures, and, you know, everything. These radios are about 150 quid and you've bought your, your base station antenna. Um, yeah, you can, you can use, gives you an idea, you can use the SWR meter that's built into the radio there just to sort of get, uh, you know, the best possible spot SWR. Don't get too caught up in SWR. I mean, when I started out, I was very sort of anal about trying to get a SWR of one to one um, yeah I mean it can be quite challenging to do that and it can be quite sort of rewarding when you do you have and I have got that on 27305 but these days to be honest you know SWR 1.5 1.6 um, I'm not that sort of bothered about it if you know what I mean um, I'm actually sort of quite reasonably happy with that well, for some reason there my uh, frequency jumped got that slightly wrong haven't I but so yeah, you know, 1.6, 1.7, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. And when I set up on a mobile uh, sort of basis with the TLT antenna, I'll take 1.5. If you start getting over two, then yeah, I think you probably sort of need to do a little bit of work tuning the antenna. Obviously, when you get to three, um, that's when you hit the danger point, and uh, sometimes the, beyond that, you can sort of get a little bit of feedback to the radio. But yeah, 1.5 is absolutely, absolutely fine. Now, finally. Um, some people that are a little bit more experienced, they, they, they prefer to switch that high SWR warning off. Reason being is that if you do a very long over, like on FM or even on sort of sideband, sometimes the radio can heat up and that can trigger the high SWR warning. And more experienced people know their SWR is absolutely fine, so they prefer to switch it off. And I'll show you how to do that. But what I'm saying is, is be very, very cautious here. I would only think about switching off your SWR high warning alert if you've got a separate SWR meter in line. So you can sort of check your SWR to make sure that it is okay because that is your last defense. If you get a direct short or the coaxial sort of is broken at somewhere, you know, from your antenna, that is your last line of defense um, to protect your radio. I do believe the 6900, even if you switch it off, I think if your SWR goes up to um, over one. Point twenty or something, extremely high. I do believe it automatically switches back on. Um, I've not. I don't really want to test that. <laughs> it's not something you want to test. That's kind of the, well, it says it does it, but uh, anyway, right. If you want to really want to sort of switch it off, basically, if you hold down the function button, which is the one on the top far left there, takes you into the functions. Okay, and then the setting that you're looking for is TSR. So you scroll through them. There you go, TSR. And then just use the channel control to switch that on or off accordingly. Uh, I, I tend to leave, leave mine on. And then either just leave it or just key up the microphone and basically that's set. So there you go if you want to turn it off. So it's just this video, I say I do get a lot of comments on the only people are setting up these radios for the first time. It's a little bit daunting, um, SWR. If you want to know a bit more about SWR, just Google um, SWR or impedance matching and it will come up on Wikipedia and you can sit down and sort of learn, you know, about standing waves and uh, mismatches and all things like that. Oh, not the camera there. But there you go. Hope this uh, this sort of one helps the new people starting up and cheers. Good, good luck to the new people. There are new people people coming on to CB. I'm getting comments all the time from people that are watching my videos and other people's videos and uh, yeah they're getting on to the uh, getting on to the sort of C the CB sort of radio sort of group which is absolutely brilliant and uh, they're getting activity and that's fine but there you go waffling on um, so cheers from Fred in the shed stay safe look after yourselves and catch you all on the next one